Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church of Kissel Hill. It is wonderful to have you with us this morning, no matter where you are, whether you're here in our fellowship hall or you're joining us on the World Wide Web. It's a glorious day to join together in worship. Just a few announcements before we get started. First is an announcement about how you come forward for communion. As we have been doing since we've returned to worship, all of your movements are orchestrated by the ushers. But I really just want to emphasize that each day, they are the ones who have decided that they're willing to keep an eye on all of us to make sure we stay appropriately socially distanced. So they're going to be the ones who dismiss you for communion by giving you hand sanitizer. You'll come to the sort of on-deck spot. Then when the altar is free, you'll come to the altar as a family unit. You don't have to come individually. You come as people living in the same household. And then you can proceed to this table where you'll receive uh, the blood of Christ, either as red wine or white grape juice. Red wine or white grape juice. Then as you return back, the other usher will give you hand sanitizer again. You can replace your mask. Uh, so that is, once again, the process for the distribution of communion. It's also true that at the end of the service, the ushers will dismiss you from your seats. Okay, so don't just get up. We'd have a scrum at the door. We'd have a lot of people trying to mass together and mash together. We're trying to avoid that as best we can. So those are some social distancing announcements. Another announcement that I have is we have switched our summer Sunday school format. Now it's going to be uh, a little bit different and involve more at-home activities. So those of you who have elementary age children who are a part of our Sunday school, uh, you have already received information about that pivot in programming. Uh, and if you uh, are not getting those emails for some reason, please send me an email or call the church office and we will make sure that you get on the list and that you get the mailed packet that we send out each week, which includes activities for elementary age children to do, to grow in faith, as well as stories and other things that they can do. So those are our two announcements today. Um, I would say, unless I'm forgetting something, am I forgetting anything, anyone? Okay, very good. We will begin our service with the prayer.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. 
Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read our psalm responsively by verse. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my living sister, and an alien from my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I am humble myself with fasting, but that was turned to my own I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who shed the gates murmur against me. And the drunkard is about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the fire. Do not let me sink. And let me be rescued from those who hate me. And out of the deep water. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind, and your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and repeat me, because my own is your A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound. By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. 
But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What is true peace? Some might say that peace is merely the absence of armed conflict. That when an army isn't in your town, when a SWAT team isn't on your doorstep, you are living in peace. Yet this definition, which so many of us rush to when we think of the word peace, is a facile one. One that treats peace superficially, rather than in its entirety. We do this, I think, because we want so desperately to believe that things are all right that we don't need to make a radical change in our lives or in our world to be able to live in peace. But just because our nation is not sparring with other nations does not mean that we experience peace in our lives. No foreign army has landed on our shores in 2020. Yet do you really believe that we right now, are living in peace. The invisible threat of illness and death hangs over all of us so very acutely. These things which always threaten us in the background seem to do so far more viciously now, occupying every spare moment and often paralyzing us with indecision. Politics continue to divide us bitterly, with our leaders attacking one another with ever more acid rhetoric, something that trickles down and poisons our conversations, too, with protests and rallies and responses to protests and rallies that, we must admit, have turned hateful and violent on every side. And with little hope that any of this will end any time soon, ending the gag order about our common life at Sunday dinner or family reunions. And this isn't all. Brokenness continues to spread like a cancer throughout our society, through the bottle and the needle, through anger and resentment, through lying and cheating and stealing, and through promises made but not kept. So how can we attain true peace in the midst of this reign of terror? Whether we recognize it or not, this is exactly what Jesus is preaching about to his 12 disciples in our gospel reading today. We might not recognize it immediately, however, because this is a reading that often defies explanation. We wonder especially about one particular verse at its heart, asking, how can it be that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, says that he has come not to bring peace, but a sword? Many throughout time have misinterpreted this as a justification for wanton violence in Christ's name. Yet that is not what Christ is saying at all. 
Jesus is challenging our human understanding of peace. He's saying, I didn't come to bring peace as you understand it. Something that would just require a few tweaks in life to come about. Rather, he says, I came to bring true peace, which requires something far greater. In our present time, it's easy to see that true peace is absent. But the absence of this peace doesn't just mark our present tumult. In fact, there's no such thing as true peace in the world as it is. No matter how many human quarrels we solve, no matter how safe and secure and happy we might feel, we aren't living in peace. In fact, we have never attained true peace at any point in human history. Why is this? It's because we are not creatures of peace. We are filled with sinfulness. We don't just commit individual sins. We live in a world where everything, including ourselves, stinks of sin. So why is it that when the world isn't burning, when new and deadly viruses aren't on the loose, when our politicians seem to be efficient and collegial, that we feel like we have peace, when in fact we don't. I think we feel this way because we do not have God's eyes for the world. We don't see, as God does, all the brokenness that lies latent just under the surface, growing imperceptibly, waiting to explode, as it has so profoundly in these last months. We trick ourselves into thinking that everything is okay. To put it simply, we live under a false peace. Jesus, however, does have God's eyes. And he is saying this. His reign is one of radical and profound change. He did not come just to calm down the brokenness of the world, to allow it to continue to exist so long as it remains small and unthreatening and on the margins. No, Jesus came to earth to totally and completely, once and for all, destroy these forces of sin and death so that they might never recur again. If he could, he would have isolated them like a surgeon and cut them out with a scalpel. This tactic, which might work for a small infection, however, won't work for us. Jesus came to put these forces of death to death. So instead of using a scalpel, he will use a sword. The sword of true peace that Jesus wants to achieve requires drastic, life-saving action. If we know the story of God's work with humanity, we know this. All of God's previous attempts to pacify human rebelliousness have failed. God gave us a law. God gave us prophets. God gave us kings and presidents and prime ministers. And these small interventions did not work. We kept on living under the illusion of false peace. That what was wrong with us was something we didn't need to go to God for. Rather, it was something we could easily fix if we just put the right pieces in the right place. So in the face of human sin, God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. This was not a small intervention. No, it was a last-ditch effort. It was the most aggressive, radical, and difficult thing imaginable for God to do. God gave up all that he had to come and live in the midst of our broken world, 
and to rage for 33 years against the forces of sin, death, and the devil. If this kind of language troubles you, of swords that cut and raging by our Lord Jesus and putting death to death, it should. Because everything in us wants to cling to the illusion of an easily attainable false peace. Everything in us wants to turn a blind eye to the growing cancer of our human sinfulness. Yet God has already acted for us. God has already acted in Jesus' incarnation for us. God has already acted on the cross for us. God has already acted in the resurrection for us. God has already acted in the ascension for us. God has already taken up the sword for us to cut down completely the sin that destroys us. This sword Jesus brings is a symbol, not an actual sword. It's a symbol of the cleaving that God is doing. God is separating us from our sinfulness. When we think about it intellectually, we understand that this is good news. But sometimes this process feels like dying, like losing things that are dear to us, status and possessions, activities that we think are harmless, thank you very much, and even our families and friends. Yet this same one who puts to death our sinful selves with his almighty sword also has the power to bring us new life. Because God loves us, he does not do this in some protracted way. No, he does this for us all at once. All at once in holy baptism, where as St. Paul says in our second reading today, we have given up any claim, any claim to the false peace of this world. And we have exchanged it for the true peace that is found in Jesus Christ. Having lost our earthly life, we now find new life in God. Having been crucified, speared, spat on, and put in the tomb alongside Jesus by the sinful forces of this world, we now have been raised and share a heavenly feast with him. Only here, brothers and sisters, only after this great ordeal can we say this. We have true peace. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. For the whole church, that we may go out to meet the inevitable reality of persecution on earth for the name of Jesus. Because we have seen in advance the reward that our loyalty will bring us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who work and suffer for life and for peace may refuse to be intimidated, but speak the truth with justice in the name of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are feeling the pressure of divine testing in their lives as God probes their motives and their actions, that they may let themselves be comforted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may have the courage to acknowledge Jesus before others so that he will recognize us before the face of his heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are caught in abuse, neglect, or illness, for the forgotten lowly ones who fall to the ground unnoticed like the sparrows, that they may be comforted by those who realize how precious they are in God's sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed ones, that the grace of God and the gracious gift of Jesus Christ may overflow for them, purifying them and bring them rejoicing into heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift all these prayers before your throne, Heavenly Father, trusting that you hear them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would ordinarily collect an offering. Uh, however, as you know, we are not able to pass a plate right now. So uh, you may drop off your offering as you enter the church or as you exit the church. If you're in this section, you can also drop it off as you come up for Holy Communion. Uh, I am very grateful to everyone who is continuing to share their first fruits with our church and with God's ministry that is done through it. For those of you watching online, we are still asking you to mail in your offering. Uh, you can mail it to the church office where it's collected weekly. We also have new ways for you to give online, either on a weekly basis or as a one-time gift to the congregation. So uh, we really give you thanks for your continued generosity in this time uh, and would point you to those ways to give, whether you're here with us in person or worshiping with us online or by phone. So thank you, and we will continue with our offertory song. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things, 
Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.